Hello and welcome to another exclusive review with me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had nearly 9 million minutes viewed on YouTube. This week we focus on Finding Neverland at the Lundfontein Theatre on Broadway. I went there wanting to love this show, but sadly I only liked it. It's not horrible or boring, but there were moments when I wanted to check my emails or just find another land. This is the story of how Peter became Pan with reminiscent score by Take That star Gary Barlow. I somehow felt I'd heard and seen this show before, even though it was my first time. The opening appeared to be an ode to O or Mystere by Cirque du Soleil. Let me be clear, there's nothing wrong with Finding Neverland, it's just struggles to compete with the original and other unique shows on the Great White Way, appealing to family audiences with family values. It is also a show of two halves. The second half is much more tight, palatable and slinkily produced. The finale is just beautiful, although a little gushing for the British palate. Laura Michelle Kelly, as always, makes you fall in love with her immediately. Such mind-blowing, effortless talent and Matthew Morrison is completely slick and clearly adored by his fans. Sadly, overall, this is a three-star production and score with five-star potential and moments throughout. The cast are terrific, though, especially the adorable and hugely talented Laura Michelle Kelly, as I mentioned, who is not only a star, but arguably much better than this show. There are moments when she shines, especially during Lullaby. Matthew Morrison is off my radar, but clearly has a massive following. His Scottish accent was curious and almost inaudible at times, but he clearly has an allure from the Glee fans. It's clear throughout that he's a theatre pro with exceptional timing, physicality and absolutely deserves to have the role. Kudos also to Terence Mann, who drives the entire show as Charles and Captain Hook, compelling performance and spectacular close to the first act. Casey Butler played Peter during my performance and was exceptional. His voice and charisma is remarkable and he's got a fabulous career ahead of him. Also, bravo to the dog in the show, a cute added R moment to this sentimental production. Finding Neverland opened in Leicester, England, but sadly does not have enough breathtaking Broadway moments for this enormous stage. Just when you thought something big was going to happen, the crescendo disappears and it just moves on. Based on the Academy Award-winning film of the same name, the show follows the playwright J.M. Barry, who finds his inspiration has been missing and then meets a family uh, with beautiful widow Sylvia and her four young children, Jack, George, Michael and Peter. The show has bucket loads of sentimentality and a few Broadway belters. There's no flying, by the way. Well, not without the aid of 27 stagehands. Maybe I've been taken in by the grandeur of Aladdin, Wicked, Mary Poppins and The Lion King. The script also is very hacky in places. Do you believe in fairies, one guy said? We work in theatre, dear. We're around them all day. Please, this is not 1974. A cheap gag from Vaudeville, not befitting a 2015 production, audience and show of this magnitude. Having said that, and all of the above, some of the performances staging and effects, along with the premise and takeaway, is inspired. The visuals at times were very moving. My favourite scene was the shadow. Utterly moving and compelling and beautifully crafted. So there it is, Finding Neverland. It's still winning awards, selling out and getting standing ovations, so what do I know? You've been listening to another review by me, Alex Belfield, here at CelebrityRadio.biz, where last year we had nearly 9 million minutes viewed on YouTube. Check out all of our hundreds of interviews and reviews at www.celebrityradio.biz. Ta-da!